The truth is, Birdman is no doubt a hip-hop mogul. He is an artist, but he is more known for his role as an executive and co-owner of Cash Money Records. Birdman has introduced the world to some of the biggest names in hip-hop. He has run one of the most successful labels for over 30 years. But with all the success that Birdman has received, he hasn't been able to quiet the rumors of all the shady things Birdman has done to keep himself at the top. Birdman was willing to do everything and anything to make it to the top of the industry, no matter who he had to screw over and take advantage of. Join me in this episode as we uncover the dark truth about Birdman. Birdman was born February 15, 1969 in New Orleans, Louisiana, and for the first month of his life, he was nameless and was simply referred to as Baby by his mother until she named him Brian. As a child, Birdman lived on a house on the top of his father's bar. When he turned five, his mother would become severely ill and would succumb to her illness. This would force Birdman to move in with his uncle for two years in Canada. He would then end up in the hands of foster care back in New Orleans until his father would begin a custody battle to retrieve his children. Birdman would then move into Magnolia Projects in Central City, New Orleans with his father. This is where he would meet up with his half-brother, Eldrick, which would quickly become his partner in crime. Birdman began his involvement in the streets alongside of his brother, committing robberies all over the city and selling drugs in his neighborhood. When he turned 16, he ended up getting arrested alongside of his brother. He was released just to be rearrested when he was 18 for drug possession and served 18 months before being acquitted of all charges. When he was finally released, him and his older brother Slim will start to become interested in a music career. They noticed a new sound in hip-hop that was emerging in New Orleans' nightclub scene called Bounce Music. Birdman decided that he wanted to start a record label, so he would start traveling around different nightclubs, searching for upcoming artists he could recruit for his label. The first artist Birdman signed was Kilo G, officially releasing the first project under Cash Money Records in 1992. Birdman will continue his search for new artists, signing more and more acts to the label. He would eventually convince a local DJ who had an underground buzz at the time, DJ Manny Fresh, to become the record label's in-house producer. By the mid-1990s, Cash Money Records would start to become a popular label in the New Orleans area. Birdman had met Lil Wayne in 1991 when Wayne was 8 years old. Wayne would start to hang around Birdman's crew whenever he had a chance. By the time Wayne was 11 or 12, he would be brought to Birdman's attention by an artist on the label, Little Slim. Wayne would start to rap for Birdman, which impressed him so much, he would quickly sign Wayne to the label and put him in a rap group. This is around the same time Birdman would start to rap himself. Towards the end of 1995, many of the first generation of Cash Money artists would start to leave the label, stating money issues drove them away from Cash Money. The artists that didn't leave willingly left unwittingly, with the label tragically losing one of the first artists they signed, Kilo G, and two other artists around the same time. This left Baby with only two artists left on the label, Lil Wayne and BG. But by 1997, Birdman had found himself two new artists, Turk and Juvenile. He would put all his remaining artists in a group and call them the Hot Boys. This was the best thing he could have ever done for his label, as success quickly followed after. Off the success of the Hot Boys, Birdman managed to acquire a major deal with Universal Records for $30 million in 1998. Birdman, realizing the opportunity, rebranded himself alongside of Manny Fresh and calling themselves the Big Timers. They released their own albums, one of the albums even went platinum. Birdman continued his career in hip-hop, signing artists and releasing music, and continuing his career that we know him for now, introducing us to some of the biggest names in hip-hop. This is what you may already know about Birdman, but the truth is much more sinister than this. See, most people know that Birdman took advantage financially of his artists. But according to Trick Daddy, who eventually joined the label and left soon afterwards, Birdman also took advances in other much more sinister ways. I've done business with Birdman. Mm -hmm. Some are good and some is bad. I just think when, when you try to be a CEO and you try to be a rapper and you try to be a ladies man, and you try to be a girlfriend. The long-standing rumor is that Birdman tends to sleep with the artists that he signs. As I covered in my last video on Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne and Birdman's relationship seem odd and inappropriate to me. Kiss the girl, right? Hey, I'm the only person he kiss. Uh, I got y'all up here. So when you kiss the girl, right? Hey, I'm the only person he kiss. Uh, that's how I roll. Well, I don't care about nobody else, man. We roll like that. Uh, we fix that one. 
The fact that Lil Wayne called Birdman his daddy and would normally kiss him on the lips seemed odd to me. Seeing Wayne was raised by his mother, but she eventually remarried and he had a stepdad. Wayne has even said that his stepdad was his real dad. He even tattooed his name on his body after his stepdad would pass away. So why was Wayne calling Birdman his daddy? And why was Birdman kissing his artist on the mouth? I believe Birdman might have had a thing for underage boys. Most of his artists that he would sign were in their teens. The reason for this, in my opinion, is Birdman's membership to the Freemasons. See, Birdman is an occultist who has used satanic rituals to achieve success and longevity in the music industry, using his fame to spread his satanic agenda so that Lucifer may continue to bless him. Birdman, like many occultists, worshiped Aleister Crowley for his contribution to Satanism. Crowley wrote about doing things to children that should never have been done to any child. He explained how he used them in rituals. This is what may have been going on with Birdman. You can easily tell that Birdman is a Freemason with the symbolism scattered all over his music and videos. He also has a pentagram tattooed on the top of his head. This led me to wonder, was Lil Wayne being abused by Birdman? Did Birdman abuse more artists than just Lil Wayne? Is that why his artists would leave his record label or get murdered? What Birdman seems to do is use his artists on his roster as much as he can to milk them for their money until they're no longer relevant. Then he seems to sacrifice whoever he is done with. Likely what he tried to do with Lil Wayne when he allegedly hired Young Thug's tour manager to shoot up Lil Wayne's tour bus, which he actually did and is still serving prison time for. Young Thug posted a threat, allegedly, this is according to the new indictment, posted a threat to Lil Wayne on his Instagram account. Five days after that threat was posted, Jimmy Winfrey, this alleged th shooter, allegedly shot at Lil Wayne's tour buses. Police are saying that Winfrey carried out the threat that Young, that young Thug had, had issued. It seemed like Birdman was trying to sacrifice Lil Wayne for multiple reasons. Like for one, he owed Lil Wayne millions because he allegedly loves to steal his artist's money. He also wanted to let Young Thug steal Wayne's album's name. Young Thug wanted to call his album The Carter Six and Lil Wayne refused and denounced Thug. This sparked a mostly one-sided beef with Young Thug sending multiple disses and coded threats to Lil Wayne. Around this time, you could see Wayne openly talking down on Birdman. The man that Wayne once called his daddy, he was now speaking down on. Free Weezy album coming soon. Carter Five coming soon. Fuck cash money. It wouldn't surprise me at all if the other artists that died on his roster were also sacrificed by Birdman. See, back in 2017, accusations again arose regarding Birdman sacrificing his artist BTY Youngin, a upcoming rap star who was growing a viral buzz out in New Orleans. It's clear what Birdman does to his artist in order to continue to grow his wealth and success, like what he did to Lil Wayne. See, Wayne was only 11 years old when he started to officially rap for Birdman, and Lil Wayne said himself on his song with Birdman like Father Like Son, that his mother thought Birdman was the devil. Lil Wayne eventually tried to kill himself when his mother told him no more music with Birdman. We had always heard about a gun incident when you were a child, you know, that you had shot yourself, and it seemed like with this song, you really, there was a lot of speculation. It seemed like you brought real clarity to the situation. You, you was upset because she didn't want you to, to rap? To rap, man. I love rap, man. I died for it, bro. Birdman is not the devil. He just serves him. Lil Wayne also said that he was abused as a child by a woman Birdman paid to perform some inappropriate acts that shouldn't have been done on an 11-year-old child. Lil Wayne claims that Birdman sat there and watched the entire time. This is very similar to what Lester Crowley was teaching with his children rituals. It's clear what agenda Birdman was promoting through his music. Birdman's sign artists he thought were going to help spread the satanic agenda. All his artists were rapping about murder, selling drugs, and money. He used them to make himself a millionaire and didn't even pay his own artists. Birdman clearly sold his soul to the devil to achieve his dreams, taking notes from Alester Crowley who used Lucifer to get everything he desired. He was willing to get rid of the artists he no longer needed and felt were acting up because he didn't feel like paying them. We must remember what agenda these artists push. We must not allow them to manipulate us into following a satanic lifestyle. They choose to sell their souls in order to have heaven on earth, but is not eternal. We must not allow them to trick us into following them into our own damnation. Thank you for watching this episode of The True Fizz. I would like everybody to know that I'm hosting a giveaway and I'm picking a winner on the 20th. The winner will get a Know The Truth shirt and also would get to personally choose the topic of an upcoming video. If you would like to participate, there's only two rules. One, 
you must be subscribed to the channel and also be following me on either TikTok or Instagram. And two, you must comment know the truth under this video. On June 20th, I will announce the winner. Thank you for all your support. If you would like to further support the channel, join me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. If you join before the 28th of this month, you can still be entered to this month's monthly raffle where you can still win a shirt, a cash prize, and even pick a video topic. Also, please leave a comment below on your thoughts on this video and on any future topics you would like to see me cover on this channel. If you like this video, please hit the like button as this helps other people find these videos. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified of future videos. Please follow me on Instagram at thetruefizz01 and on TikTok at thetruefizz. I would gladly appreciate it. Thank you. Goodbye.